Hello and welcome to the latest from Heart Standard. My name is Joe Sked and once again I am joined by my colleague James Kearney. How's it going James? Yeah, very well thanks. How are you getting on? Yes, yes, not too bad. We bit, we bit tired. Um, mm. Stayed out stayed out late after um, the Heart Standard live event last night. Uh, ah. Uh, I, was, I was walking up Princess Street with a Taco Bell about the, the back of one. So, oh, uh, that's not yeah. good. Was, was, wasn't hungover. I just, I just could have done with an extra couple of hours of mm. good sleep. Uh, well, Joe, mm. serves you right. Yes, it does. It does. I am a, I'm a 35 year old man with no discipline when it comes to uh, when, it, when it comes to lager. Uh, did you did you enjoy your, did you enjoy yourself last night? Yeah, it was it was really good fun. It was nice. Yeah, it was a nice event. It was nice meeting people, uh, chatting all things hearts and uh, having a having a pint, having a pie, and looking ahead to the new season. So, yeah, it was good fun. It was good yeah, fun. It was absolutely. Jim said it was, it was a very good night. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, Jim. I'm hoping that will be a um, regular thing over the, over the season that uh, us and Big Hearts will um, join kind of forces to uh, bring some live content. I've already reached out to Laurie at Scarfs Around the Funnel. I think there's some, definitely something we could do there with a kind of, um, um, uh, kind of partnership or to do an event with uh, kind of Hands, hands across. I was going to hands across the divide, but it's not just uh, hands across fellow hearts. Hands, uh, hands across the funnel. Yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's that's much better. So yeah, and um, we will of course um, keep you updated on any kind of progress we get with uh, events in the near future or further on in the season. We are here though to chat all things. Heart of Midlovian 2024-25. We're going to preview the season. Um, Oh, sorry, I've just uh, I was too busy looking at my phone. Uh, we're about to preview the, uh, the the coming season, so we're going to have a kind of look, uh, just in general how we're feeling about it, um, uh, what kind of discuss what I think our best elevens would be. Absolutely impossible trying to do that, and uh, then we'll finish with some predictions for the season ahead. And these kind of tie in to a couple of prediction articles that we're going to go uh, have up on the site, whether it's going to be Thursday or Friday. Got myself James uh, involved, got Tom Irving involved, Craig Fowler, and uh, Scott. So guys who um, have been contributing to the site, you know, off and on or the videos uh, over the last year or so. So they will be uh, so they will be up over the next couple of days. But before then, I have a message from our sponsor, of course. Uh, wait till I find it. Here it is. This episode is brought to you by our sponsors, MPH Boilers and Viesman. MPH Boilers is a multi-award winning family run plumbing and heating company covering all of mainland Scotland, recently crowned Family Business of the Year at the 2024 Fife Business Awards. Partnering with Viesman, a German engineered, highly awarded boiler manufacturer, they make a perfect match for homes across Scotland. So if you are looking for a boiler or the elk do check out mph boilers and recently believe they are based in the kingdom that is fife but we are here to talk about half midlovian of course graham uh, asks about the goalkeeper situation i'll bring it up uh, shortly because uh, we will come to that firstly how are you feeling about hearts's upcoming season james um i think i'm feeling pretty positive about it maybe I'm- uh, feeling pretty optimistic again. Maybe it's easier for me because at the end of the day, I've not got as much skin in the game as like yourself. But um, I think there's a lot of reasons to be really optimistic about it. Yeah, okay, there's you know preseason results could have been better, but we know that their preseasons, you know, like it's preseason. It doesn't really matter come the end of all. You know, um, it's just about getting up to speed. So I think that when you look at the squad, I think in terms of you know, there's be a couple of outgoings. Seven incoming so far, um, and eight from the horizon as well. The looks of it with Malachi Boateng. I think that when you look at the quality of players that have come in, um, I think they do improve the team. I think the team is going to be in a think you know, pound for pound, man for man, it's going to be a better squad this season. Mm. So it's going to be a year further down the line than Naismith. So I think, in terms of you know, understanding exactly how, what he wants and how he wants to play, and maybe getting it a little bit more sophisticated as well. Like that's all stuff that just takes time. And then, uh, so I would think that Arts will be. I'm going to stick my neck out. Obviously, I think Hearts will improve from last season. I think come the end of it all, definitely a higher points tally at the very least. Oh, higher points because that's that's something that I, I probably touch on in the predictions. But I just wonder if I still I, I'm still confident going in the season about our chances. Still look at the the squad and I agree. I think as a squad, it's improved from a starting eleven. I'm not too sure just yet because you look at it, you've lost Alex Cochran, 
And I don't think, I think he could potentially get there, but we'll, we'll see. I think James Penn, uh, I don't think James Penrice is at the level of Alex Cochran was, but that is, uh, we'll see how he handles the mm. step up from Livingston to Hearts. So that's kind of, that's a question mark. And then on the flip side, speaking to people, the, the reason at the Tottenham friendly, I do think we've strengthened the right-hand side of the defence. So mm. that's kind of, almost kind of balanced that out to an extent. Um, and then, has anyone come in and just instantly made the starting eleven better? You could maybe you could argue around Danda, you could argue around Spill. You've got Ben McKay coming back, but I just think the, the squad as a whole is better, and the uh, it's a mixture of excitement and intrigue for me for the season, just because of the European factor and how that will impact the the season. Because you actually looked at him, we were discussing this uh, uh, discussing this last night. I think it was discussing it with Scott McIntosh or. Uh, Spoke to quite a few people, so it might have been uh, might be someone else. But you look at the look at the schedule if we finish and if we get into the Conference League, you've not got a game and you play a couple of games in August, the playoff, and then your next one's not till September, and then it's uh, sorry, the next one's not till October mm. in in Europe, and then I think you have basically got two games in October, two games in November, two games in uh, two games in December. So that period is going to be really really tight. So yeah. Um, yeah, it, 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 excited and intrigued. I think is, uh, is 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 the way I would describe how I'm feeling. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. And, and John, I think you did make a really good point about the fact that I think most people would agree that the squad it looks like to be in a better place. But I think you're right in terms of how many people that have come in slot straight into that starting eleven. I mean, obviously we're going to talk about the strongest eleven later on, um, and. It feels a bit unfair to do it at this point because it's, it's so early, it's such a yes, thing. Of, of it's, course, it's not even a, a ball competitive, yeah. in a competitive game, but at the same time, looking at it, I, that was one thing that struck me when I was kind of putting together my strongest 11 was, oh, there's not many new boys in here actually. So, like, hopefully, I, I'd love to be wrong because, like, you know, you want to see the new players coming in and make an impact, but yeah, um, it did seem, it seems to me, to be a window where it's been more about, yeah, like beefing up the squad, making sure it's ready for the demands of domestic and European football rather than going through it kind of position by position, going, okay, let's get an upgrade on what we've already yeah. got. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I suppose that leads us on to the the starting 11, the strongest squads. Jim says, I think we, we've we got a stronger squad, but I don't think we've got a stronger 11. Graham, I, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the season and trying to pick a starting 11 every week is impossible. Plenty mm-hmm. of options to choose from. And if someone doesn't perform there, someone else can step in. Uh, so firstly, that's exactly what Naismith said after the Fleetwood game. Got loads of competition. There's no hiding place. If you're not if you're not doing it in training, if you're not doing games, there's someone there to replace you. That's mm. that's healthy. That's that that's encouraging. Uh, the, the second side of that, yeah, trying to pick our uh, do our predicted lineups from week to week is going to be absolutely impossible. Uh, yeah. and, I mean, have you have you ever got one right? No, I think I've, I've maybe got ten out of eleven a couple of times, but I don't actually think I've uh, oh, ever dear. got uh, ever got the full <laughs> full um, compilation. Um, I suppose. I kind of want you to touch on the goalkeeping situation because Graham does uh, does say, not sure I agree with Nessie, not having a guaranteed number one, as I don't think chopping and changing is a good thing, but that's just my personal opinion. So I think Graham's alluding to um, the comments Nessie uh, made when he spoke to Barry uh, during the week, uh, Barry Anderson during the week, and said that um, he's there's not like a definitive number one. I'm on the side of Graham here. I think it's something we talked about last night at the Heart Standard Live regarding the goalkeeper is, and we asked Andy Webster about it. Was I just I I just don't see uh, I don't know if it's just um, like looking old school or whatever. I just I, if just a goalkeeper. I think he's like kind of the one one of the positions where you just think you, you just want to have that guy that you you can you can trust. And it's great mm-hmm. at the moment where if that goalkeeper doesn't perform, then you've got someone whether it's Xander Clark or Craig Gordon to come in and replace him. But I agree with Graham that that's a wee slight concern for me is. If it's going to, if you're not knowing, um, not knowing who's going to be the goalkeeper from kind of from week to week, or um, or how it's going to work. Mm. I mean, it, it, it is a difficult situation in that you know I don't think there's any other team I can think of, certainly well, I can think of in Scotland where there's so little difference between the first and second choice goalies in terms of their quality and how good they are, and you know because there's a very good argument for each of them that should both be playing. You know, so I think it's a really difficult situation. Uh, but I do, I do can agree yourself and with Graham. I think it's better to have an established number one. It's better to have the guy that goes 
week in, week out, you're going to be playing, you know, just for like little things on the pitch. I think it's important just to have that consistency. That relationship between the goalie and the defence is really important. And I think that's something that develops through a consistent selection. Um, and I, I guess I just don't really know how it would work and uh, keep both players happy, I suppose, because we, we've spoken in the past, I don't think either of us agree that, um, you know, the idea that if a goalie makes a mistake, you know, chucks in a bad, has a bad game, then you take him out to start 11 in the next season, you can't, the next game, sorry, you can't even stick with him yeah. no matter what. So it's like, okay, well, how bad would it have to, would somebody's have form have to be in order to drop out the team? How long would it have to go on for? Um, you know, and at that point, I, I, do, I, do, like, I think particularly looking back to last season, I think it'll be a case of Clark will be starting pretty much most games and then Gordon might be filling in here and there. And again, I don't know if, I, I can't imagine Craig Gordon's the type of person that would be particularly happy about that. But no, no. See, I, mean, exactly, I, just, I don't know. It is a bit of a headache now. I think last season it was maybe a little bit more straightforward just because obviously Gordon was out for half a season. He gets back in. He very much has to get eased back in. And with the Euros coming up, there was, you know, Nathan of could kind of fought between them and go, well, I want to get them both in the squad for the Euros. Fair enough. This season, though, where it's like, okay, they're both coming into it full fitness. Both coming into it, like wanting to play, wanting to start. You know, no one's coming back from an injury. I've looking a bit shaky or anything. So it, it's going to be a really big call, but I think it's one that Nesmith nice probably does have to make, I would think. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 completely, agree. I completely agree with that. Liam, Liam L says, Gordon to play cup and uh, Europe. That that if if you're going to be chopping, if you're not, if you're going to be giving them both games, that's like the most sensible, or like the, you think the most straightforward thing, where you've got a league goalkeeper and then you've got a goalkeeper who's going to play in Europe, the Scottish Cup and the League Cup. Because potentially, if you do that, then whoever plays in the in in Europe and the uh, the cup games, you could potentially play I don't know, 12, 13, 14 games in the season. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you'd, you'd you'd but, um, straight off the bat, but see, I mean, it, it could work. But again, it's, you know, is that you know, is that enough of a selling point? I go to yeah. say, right, you're going to play, um, you know, you know, again, particularly if uh, you know, it's going to be you know, you're going to play a lot in the first half of the season, second half, you might play two or three games, like yeah, you know, you fancy, you know, it's a it's a difficult sell. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult sell. So that's where you're thinking. I, I, I was actually, I, w- I was off the view that uh, that I. I I thought that Gordon was going to be uh, was going to be number one this this season, and then mm. just just the way uh, summer's gone, I, and then just speaking to people, he's just like, okay, maybe it's it's going to be Zion or Clark, and I think like Scott Scott here said, it has to be Clark as number one. Um, that I think there is. Um, there's been a big change over, over Clark's. If you, I think it went back six months ago, people would mm-hmm. be looking at oh, maybe uh, bring bring back Gordon into it. And obviously, we've seen it at the Merrin game when Clark went down injured and folk were buzzing uh, about Gordon. That there has been a bit more, probably a bit greater appreciation of what Clark has uh, Clark has done um, while Gordon's been out. So yeah, would Clark take it? Clark's your in your best, like, like your strongest eleven. Is your number one? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I think I think I've, I've opted for him over Gordon. I just think that, um, again, it's just you know we've, we've only got a handful of games from Gordon from last season to go off of, um, whereas we've got basically a full season of stuff from Clark to go off of, and I kind of look at it and go, I think that Clark's delivered consistently, and you know he got. How many clean sheets did he get in the end last season? It was you know, like loads. 18, of, you know, 19, Okay, obviously the defence are all playing their part there as well. It's a collective achievement. Yeah. But still, you know, I, I thought he had a really good season. And I think that, I mean, this is, that's the thing. I was going to say it'd be extremely harsh to draw from. But then it's also, okay, well, you've also got your club legend goalkeeper coming back, making a miraculous comeback again. And it's extremely yeah. harsh to drop him too. So, yeah, I think either way it's going to be extremely harsh. But I, I, I would go for Clark personally. I don't envy Stephen Naismith in this <laughs> in this scenario. So I look at, I still break it down as which goalkeeper would I want to win me or save me a game, and my answer mm. is always Craig Gordon. Yeah. But with Xander Clark and I think they're is that I'll bring, maybe bring in a couple of uh, the, the, the uh, comments on that. Kenny Fairbairn says, so Hi guys, spoke to Craig Gordon after Spurs game, said I felt for a missing Scottish squad. He replies, there's the next one, which that kind of, I think that basically mm-hmm. just uh, tells you a lot about Gordon's mentality 
and uh, he's, he's he's not going to give. We've seen it with his message after the, the Scotland squad that he's never going to give up. Uh, Alexander Taylor says, "No offense to Clark, but Gordon has to be number one. There's levels to the position, and Clark has never reached the levels Gordon was uh, was at before his leg break. I think that is uh, that's a very fair point, and kind of goes back to what I was saying about who would want to win a game, who would want to uh, save a game. So." <laughs> Gordon is uh, for the summer. He's been like he's going to be my number one. And then uh, when I was writing it, down, I was like, "No, nah, I'm going to put Clark as number one." Because you look at it as uh, another thing comes in the, to play. We kind of talked about it last night with the ball at his feet. We've seen it. I think it was a, uh, the late mm-hmm. morning game. The first pass Gordon did. He tried to clip it to Musa Drama, and it just went straight into the stands, uh, nowhere near Musa. So I think th- th- there's probably that in it as well. If I was picking the Hearts eleven, I'd probably I'd probably go for Gordon. Uh, but I think it will be I think it will be Clark. Um, now we've uh, now we've went around the houses there. Who, in terms of your best or your what you view as the strongest eleven now? Like you said, there's caveats to it. It's just the start mm-hmm. of the season. They've not got a um, we've, uh, we've we've not played a competitive game. What but what would be your strongest eleven and what formation would you go for? Because obviously uh, that comes into it as well because they're so uh, nice. We've seen Naismith likes to change depending on the situation, depending on the opponents. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I reckon that the one I've got just now written down, that's a 4-3-3. Three, three. Mm-hmm. Just because I think that's probably what we're going to see most of this season. I'm sure we'll see the back three at times and I'm sure the, stat, the shape of that midfield three will change. You know, I think sometimes it'll be one guy sitting with two guys ahead. I think sometimes it'll be two guys sitting with you know, like a number 10 in that playmaker role. Uh, but yeah, I, I've gone for a back four for the purposes of this. Um, and so, I mean, straight off the bat, I, I find myself struggling with this because I was going to start at left back. And I find myself a very difficult decision to make already, but I, I went for Stephen Kingsley in the end. Um, I'm assuming you've, David, have you gone for Penrose? Hey, I can't remember. I was, I was laughing at um, I was laughing at Liam L uh, in uh, a YouTube comment. So he's put up his uh, eleven, which I'll read out in shortly, and then he just replied again. For now, anyway, it will change in three minutes, and that's probably the best way to best best way to put it because um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We change all the time. Sort of, like from from a back four, I've got I've went for Kingsley at left back, um, then at centre half, Kent, Oyegoki, and Taylor. Uh, right back, so that, that that's the back four I've went for. So it'd mean, I mean, I mean, the other option is I would be, of course, maybe all your goalkeeper drops out, Kingsley shifts over to centre half, then there's room for Penrice uh, or somebody like that. But I, I I think that's probably on four the strongest back four that Hearts have from a defensive perspective. I think it looks really solid. I think the only issue I'd say is maybe depending on the opponent, Kingsley's maybe not got quite the same amount of mobility as somebody like Penrice. Yeah, again, I, in that instance, you could maybe move him in to go go key out or whatever. But I think Kingsley's definitely got to be in there somewhere for me, and I think Kent's definitely got to be in there somewhere. Taylor's definitely got to be in there. <laughs> uh, the, the other one spot, I'm I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to talk. Yeah, yeah, because I think we said uh, it was the Spurs game that the 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 back four of like Taylor, Oyagoki, Kent, and Kingsley just is formidable. As, it's as just really solid, like, I think. Yeah, yeah like, just, defense, you, from a purely defensive perspective, you know. That that that's a heart's defense, a big, mm. big, strong, physical, robust defense. Uh, so I, that's uh, yeah. Don't mind that. You, you talk through the rest of your eleven, and then I'll say mine, and then I'll bring in some of the guys in the comments. Right. So I guess for my midfield three, then I had uh, Devlin, Benny, and Danda. I'm um, not entirely sure about the shape, to be honest. Um, obviously, we could have Benny in the six, in the six, definitely that centre mid role. Then um, Danda played in that kind of playmaker role. We saw the likes of George Grant playing in a lot last season. You could kind of do that, mm-hmm. um, or you could also just have obviously just Benny and Devlin both sitting, as if we did really effectively under Nielsen. Then you got Danda in that number ten position up ahead. So I think those three are probably the best. Well, probably my favourite three pound for pound midfielders. Yeah, because I was, was going to say that you, 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 you're a big, yeah, you're a big Cammy Devlin fan because that's where um, uh, surprised if uh, the the lack of Hoff. Exactly, that's the thing. I do feel bad. I do. Um, I do like me some. I do like. I do enjoy Cammy and Hoff as well. Um, there's a couple of other players that I'm sure we're going to talk about later on in this that I'm, I'm really excited to see more of this season. Yeah, um, but at the same time, I do think. I mean, it's, it goes on again. It just underlines that kind of wealth of options that Nice has got. I, I genuinely think there's probably 
five, maybe six guys playing that kind of central, central midfield area that could credibly say, I should be starting pretty much every week. And you look at it yeah. and go, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, fair enough. So I think there's that. Um, and then for my front three, uh, I had uh, Vargas uh, on the right-hand side. I, mean, I, would like, I wouldn't mind seeing him more for, on the left, though, coming this season. Actually. I think, yeah, just, I feel like there's maybe a bit of, it could maybe make a wee bit more of an impact there, but that's just me. Um, and then I also had uh, Forrest on the other side and then Shankland up top. Kill surprise. Um, so I, that, that was the one I went for. But uh, okay. then, like I said, I noticed that particularly going in the, far, in the kind of forward areas, I noticed that, yeah, I've not really got any of the new players, uh, any yeah. of the signings, which um, I thought was kind of mildly interesting, I suppose. I don't know. What, so what have you went for? So I, yeah, so because I've seen... Uh, uh, Craig sent his in, and uh, Tom sent his in as well. And I just glanced at Tom's. Tom's, uh, Tom's done. He's been very smart. He's given me one in a, a, as a back three and a back four. So I kind of did. Uh, I did the same route. Um, oh, that's cheating! <laughs> I know. I know. So I'll, I'll, I, I will settle on one. And uh, but I just wanted to. So I did. Uh, so I wrote out a, a back four, and I wrote out a one with a back three. And the there's eight eight players are in the same. Uh, eight, eight players are in both, uh, both right. levels. So the, that was Clark, uh, Clark, Kent, Kingsley, Taylor, Benny, Hoff, Shankland, and Vargas. Okay, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. So again, only one new. That's just thing. Taylor then. Uh, then just, 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 just Taylor. Yeah. So uh, I, so I really like the back three. I, I just, I don't know. I, if, if it's. I just think the back three gets the best out of the, a lot of the defenders, but at the, time, at the same time, you're like, my my concern with the back three is when things are not going great, it looks more like a back back five, and especially when you've uh, the like full full backs who the good thing. So the good thing now, I think with uh, I think Cochrane was fine with it, but Penrice and Taylor, I think they're more. Um, I think probably more wing backs than they are full backs, so mm. that kind of that fits into that uh, that side of things. But yeah, uh, I'll go since we've kind of been talking the back four. Mine was uh, so Clark, uh, Taylor, Kent, Kingsley, and I've actually yeah, I'm uh, I am I'm, I'm going to change this because uh, mm. I actually had Taylor, Kent, Kingsley, and uh, Rolls in a back uh, in a back four. Just in the mindset of that's what I think maybe uh, Naismith would do, but for me, I just I, I like the look of uh, I'm going to go for the same back four you went for just because I liked um, the look of three of them against Spurs and the thought of Kingsley in it. So you yeah, shift Kingsley to left back, and then you have Oyegoki and Kent in the middle. In the midfield, I went for when it's a midfield three. I went for uh, kind of like a, if it was a four two. Um, Four two three one. I went mm. for Benny and the Hoff as uh, the two sitting. Uh, Spittle in there as um, in there as well with Mackay, Shankland, and Vargas as the front three. Um, but then I can't, it depends on the opposition as well because there's certain mm. games where I would play. I, I home at uh, sorry, home like Motherwell, more comfortable playing. I would like James Penrix at left back because he's got great stamina. He gets up and down the line really well as a fullback. Then. I would have Danda in ahead of Spill because I probably think Danda's a bit more for a creator. And then um, you would have Spill who could play if we're if we're playing against those form or in a derby where you probably want a bit more legs in the midfield, mm. a bit more kind of defensive nous in the midfield that you'd want name. And then the Byron Mackay, I would only play him certain games. And then I would again like. Those are you the big, big ones get, or no, the, no they, so the, the ones where you're wanting guys to nace was like right, I want you to do a job, you just do it. I would bring Forrest in and they have Forrest Vargas and Shankland like mm. you. So yeah, like Liam says, it cha- honestly it changes every few minutes. It's, it's it's really, really difficult to really difficult to pick. But I think the fact that I've got looking at the looking at the two elevens that there's eight or nine players there that would probably be in both of the 11s. So at least you've got a really good core mm. to kind of build around and then drop in and out. I was kind of, would like to get Grant in there somewhere, but I just think he could be just this 
kind of shapeshifting midfielder where depending where which job he needs or if he comes off the bench because he's seen how effective he was off the bench last uh, last season as well so yeah it's uh, there, there's there's so much to, uh, so much choice yeah exactly that's the thing you make, you know I think no matter what way you, you pick your team here like you said there's always somebody really good missing out you know like you yes. said I've, I've not got you know I'm missing out in the half you know and I'm, yeah it breaks my heart I'm missing out in them anyway and then like you know you've not got Devlin in your team or yeah no, I really like Devlin really like yeah you know, miss a drama he's not even got a mention yet in other teams so yeah. you know maybe he's gonna be great like so yeah i think you know again that kind of just kind of goes back to what we've been mainly talking about it's, it's a really strong squad in terms of i think if you take one player out if somebody has to drop out because they're tired or whatever you know it's too many games and you take somebody out, put somebody else in i don't think there's like a drop off in quality i don't think there's much you know i think there's a like we've been saying and there's a big group of about 18 20 players are so probably all in that are all more than capable of playing and there's probably ability wise there's probably not loads between them all so i think like we can even get at it's like the overall quality of the squad is like really risen but yep. without perhaps having that you know those superstars coming in the start 11 and really kind of elevating the team like that so um i i think that's what's happening here but we don't i guess we won't really know until we get going right yeah, absolutely. That's again. That's that's when I came into when I've talked about the being excited for the season, but intrigued by the season. That's what intrigues me is just how how the, the like the how it's going to work with the squad and how Matt Nace is going to manage it and how he changes it from game to game. Yeah, because it's um, I, it's it, it's difficult. So I will read out. I'll read out some of the read out the guys who have uh, commented. So Liam L says he's went for Gordon Oyagoki, Kent Kingsley in a back three. Taylor, Benny, Danda, Grant, and Penrice as uh, the mid, the five man midfield. Uh, I do like that. Uh, do, I do like that midfield, um, especially midfield three, especially certain home games. Mm. And uh, Shanklin and Vargas up front. Graham goes with a four two three one. Clark, Taylor, Kent, Kingsley, Penrice, Benny, Hoff, Danda, Spittle, Vargas, Shanklin. Don't mind that either. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind this, don't mind this. Uh, Alexander Taylor says Gordon, Taylor, Kingsley. Oh, um, trying to work out what the. Um, I think we missed missed a player there. Yeah, we? so. Yeah, uh, uh, oh, I think we must be missing Kent. Frankie Kent. Forgot so. to add, yeah, forgot to add Kent to say Kingsley. So right. um, it was uh, Gordon, Taylor, Kent, Kingsley, Penrice, Benny, Hoff, Forrest, Danda, Varga, Shankland. If we have to change to a uh, uh, 532, Gordon, Taylor, Oyogoki, Kent, Kingsley, Penrice, Benny, Hoff, Danda, Vargas, Shankland. That was quite similar or bang on to the, uh, the my back five. Uh, mm, yeah, back yeah. Three one. Um, and Liam says, guess it's a positive when none of us can de- de- decide on a set 11. Uh, pre- yeah, probably is. And that's like, it keeps the opposition. Uh, if I was Philip, uh, Philip Clement, I was like, I have no idea what Hart's going to do. I, honestly, how am I meant to prepare for this? Uh, just Mark Shackland. That's just just do that and hope, hope, hope for the best. Uh, so it's, uh, it's it's going to be going to be fascinating to see what the starting eleven against Rangers is. Obviously, we'll pre. I'll, I think I'm going to preview the game on Friday with Scott and. Uh, at the moment, I think the, the, the issue with all this, the, these uh, best 11s or strongest 11, Benny and the Hoff are not available against <laughs> Rangers, so he's going to yeah. have to do, do something. Obviously, we've got uh, Malachi Boateng potentially coming in um, on um, on either today or, or, or tomorrow, and he hopefully could be available. Um, I, Paul asks, what about the team for Saturday? Paul, I am stressed out just uh, dealing with this, 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 this strongest 11. So we'll discuss the team on uh, Friday's episode. Um, as Graham says, if Boateng signs as well, that's another option. Before we finish, we will do our predictions for this season. So uh, in, I have looking for... League finish, cup performances, European performance, player of the season, sign in the season, surprise of the season, bold prediction, and most looking forward to. So we'll just rattle through these quickly. So, James, you, uh, I'll bring Jim Ogg in here because he says, we'll see if James sticks to his hearts will finish second call from last night as he played to the audience. Uh, where are hearts finishing next season? I, I might have got a bit carried away. I'm, I'm, going, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to shamefully climb down from my position. I'm going to go first down. <laughs> Um, I, was just, I was looking at it. I was, looking, I was thinking about it more this morning. I was looking at the table and stuff, and I was like, "Hart, the you know, Rangers did finish seventeen points ahead last season. That's quite a lot. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. quite a big gap to make up." And don't get me wrong, like like I said earlier, I think Hearts, 
you know, we'll get more than they did. And it wouldn't surprise me if Rangers performed worse this time around. But yeah, I might I might have got a wee bit carried away there. So I think I got a bit much. <laughs> Uh, Jim says, absolute covered. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Third uh, third place. Uh, so what about cup performances? Because this is a difficult one. I'm mm. kind of reluctant to put it in because yes, who knows with the with the, uh, with the draw. It's, it's impossible to predict. So uh, for me, I, I think we might struggle Premier Sports Cup just because of Europe and uh, Scottish mm. Cup, let's say, semi-final. Yeah, I mean, I've... I've... <laughs> Kind of list out on this one. I basically just said like until parts are drawn against the old firm. Yeah, that's kind of my <laughs> belief to be honest. Yeah. Like you know, again, like yeah, you know, maybe it's a quarter final, maybe it's the final. Yeah. Another thing I point out is if I think if Hearts didn't have to face either of the old firm, which is rare but happens, I think Hearts could easily go and win either cup. Yeah. Like, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like his history's not on Hearts' side here. You know, I think that um, that's usually where these cup runs to cup come to an end. So. Um, I'm going to have to go for that, I'm afraid. European performance, how do you think we'll do in Europe? Uh, so I've, I've went for the... So in the Conference League, I think Hearts can get to the playoff no, round before, before the last 16. So like, there's a there's a little round in between the league phase and the last 16, and I think that's where they'll go. So basically, there's, what, 36 teams in the Conference League? Yep. Uh, the top eight, they're all through at the last 16 straight away. Yep. Then the following eight play the next day after that and then uh, the bottom eight are just you know eliminated gone yeah so i think that, that i guess that's where i think i could see hearts getting in i think that i could see them you know by my the way i'm looking at it, i think eight or nine points seems perfect you know that seems more than enough to get to qualify for this next stage uh looking at it i think that's i think hearts are more than capable of that yeah so i, I think they get to the knockout round at that point you probably play a higher Team like somebody's performed better than you at that point. That's maybe the dream over, but it'd still be exciting. So yeah, that's what I went for. Yeah, I've, I've went for the exact same, and just just to play in a knockout, uh, like a proper like a, I'm mm. thinking, I'll say a proper knockout game. Is, yeah, it's uh, a proper uh, knockout game. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, just uh, after uh, after uh, after uh, Christmas would be would be class. So yeah, like you, I think just drop it in the Conference League and pick up enough points to get into uh, the, um, the the playoff knockout round. Player of the season. Yeah. Lawrence Shankland. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've changed this. I was, I did have Frankie. I was in my head. It was Frankie Kent, but uh, I'm going for Kenneth Vargas. I think he's going to have a, a a real exciting season. It's also because the way Andy Webster talked about him last night, I was like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. really excited. Now. Uh, signing off the season. Uh, I think it's going to be Gerald Taylor. Yeah. Um, again, we talked about this, bit, about this last night, but I've just been really impressed from what I've seen from. Um, Kind of watching him playing back in Costa Rica, I think we've, we've liked what I saw from the wee glimpses we have seen. You know, particularly against Spurs, I thought he had a really good game. Um, and I just think that in terms, when you look at how much he's achieved in such a short space of time, you know, um, you know, when his move to the big, to one of the biggest teams in Costa Rica, winning the league there, becoming a full international, getting his move to Europe, he seems like he's on this really steep upward trajectory. And I think as well as watching him, when you, you know, it's. It, his aggression, his pace, his physicality, like those are all things that will get you far and so they will get you very far. So yeah, I think he's I think he can hit the ground running and I think he can also improve a lot as well. Yep, I, uh, I've, I've already, uh, uh, like half an hour into the Spurs game, I tweeted out that he's going to be side of the season, so I'm going to stick with that. Surprise of the season. So I've gone for Finley Pollock will make a claim for the right wing position. This was after oh. uh, his performance against uh, East Stirlingship, I know it's East Stirlingship, in the B team, but uh, he is a player who is... Uh, very, very highly rated by the management team, and he's quick. He's really, really quick. So, yeah, that's uh, that. That's 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 my surprise of the season. Oh, that's a good one. I, I, I mean, kind of along a similar vein. Um, I'm not, I've just went. I think Macaulay Tate's going to make it quite. A, I mean, you'll get more minutes this season than he did last mm-hmm. season. Because um, I just think you know, from what he did last season, I think there was like clear his promise was really clear to see those poten- the potential was there. You know, he's been quite he's been pretty well involved during pre-season in these matches, getting uh, used to the first team. And I think the only thing that's holding him back is, as we've spoken about a lot already, there's a lot of players playing central midfield that will want to play. You know, a lot of new players as well coming into the team, like Spittle, uh, Spit, oh, Danda, Boateng. So there's going to be a hell of a lot of competition. But even despite that, I still think that I, I still think he can kick on a bit more this season. Like, yeah. I don't think he's going to be like a, you know starting every week or anything like that. But I do think that. 
even compared to the season just there, I think you'll get more minutes, play more football, have a bigger role. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go for Tate there. And what about your bold prediction? Um, I went to our hearts, we'll win a league game at Ibrox. Oh, I was wondering why you were asking me about uh, the, the, our record. I uh, rec- wonder why you messaged me about that. Yeah, because I was like, I knew it'd been a while. Um, yep. Reliably informed it was 2012, is that right? 2012 in the top flight. Yeah. In the top flight, yeah. So, yeah, yep. that's pretty, you know, we're going to go over that. That's too long. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and I know it's, I know it's hard, it's difficult, of course it is. But the heart should be doing better than that. And I think that this could well be the year where that happens. Um, the one thing I would say is that of all the teams in the league um, last season Rangers were the Hearts' bogey team I think it's fair to say <laughs> you know um, it struggled more against Rangers than anything else but just, I don't know just, again I think the Hearts are on this upward trajectory at the moment I can see Rangers having a difficult season and I think that this could be finally be the year uh, they get to celebrate a, a win in, in, in Govan Oh, let's hope you, you're definitely right. Uh, my bold prediction is an English club or clubs will make an approach for Stephen Naismith at some point during the season, but he will turn it down just because I think he's, uh, if he's if, if we start well, do well in Europe, because of his name and what he did in England, I think he'll be attract, he would attract interest for teams who, uh, because you know what it's like in England, people, uh, the clubs change managers all the time and yeah. then they will look and see the job he's doing here so yeah that's uh that's that's my bold prediction yeah i mean because there was points at last season where you thought that it wouldn't have been the craziest thing to see that happen you know um i, I guess part of it's just the fact that he's still a relatively young coach um and get, get inexperienced in that sense but at the same time i think you're right i mean if you know the hearts can if he keeps doing what he's doing at hearts you know if, you know keep this you know really solidifying that third place looking up towards second you know, competing in Europe, going deep in the cups. Eventually, of course, it's going to get attract interest from elsewhere. Um, but yeah, like you, I, I think it need to be a very, very good offer for Naismith to go anywhere else. Just because I think this is a, just a, a situation just now that just suits everyone. I think everyone's enjoying it and everyone is suiting everyone. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I could go with that. I think I could see that happen. And finally, most looking forward to uh, the European campaign. Yeah, I think I think uh, that's that just because obviously yeah, there's the away days and all that kind of stuff, of course. But I think last season as well, okay, there was Rosenborg at home was a great, you know, good, good result, great performance, all the rest of it. The other three games, uh, not great, and that came at a time when you know Hearts were slow at champs. It wasn't that was probably the, the poorest Hearts were all season was that early stage of the, the campaign. But you know this time it's going to be stretched out. You know it's going to be European football up until what Christmas time, perhaps even beyond. I'm interested to see how they just measure themselves against these other teams in the continent, you know, because I think that Hearts are better than they gave account like, than they showed. I think they're better than they, they showed last season. Mm. I'm still not quite sure you know, how good then, because like it's difficult to within the context of Scottish football, you can say, okay, they're not quite as good as Celtic or Rangers. Okay, they're better than everyone else, but you know, what's that actually mean? So it's only, I think yeah. it's only in Europe where you can actually see, all right, that's where Hearts are. That's the level. Because I think yeah. right now that's a little bit up in the air. So hoping to get an answer to that question for the next <clears> few months and hopefully it's a good one as well yeah no that that's that that's a brilliant answer because uh, yeah because you, you go back to the like fiorentina and uh, istanbul uh Basics here where they um there was there's a massive gulf especially games mm. uh games at time castle between the sides uh yeah i've got similar vein i've gone for looking for most looking forward to is monday and just the, the excitement of the europa league uh playoff draw uh even if they have uh, a it, it's there's a very good chance that it'll be uh, hearts will play and then it'll be two teams it'll be the winners of x and y in their tie mm-hmm. so we don't probably won't have anything definitive if we do have definitive it means we've maybe drawn somewhere like anderlecht which would be cool as well we will leave it there because i need to go and get ready for our wedding i am attending this evening so james thank you very much for um coming on and um also for all your efforts because this be no this won't be your last uh, last uh, video but this will be your last video officially as a member of Hearts Standard. So I'll, I'll be getting roped in every now and again. Though, yeah, sure. oh, definitely. You'll, you'll, you'll get rid of me that easily. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be I'll be mess- You will be getting messages from time to time. But please come on a video, uh, and so we could hear your thoughts. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for um, engaging, contributing, uh, subscribing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll have plenty of content going up over the next couple of days, looking ahead to the start of the season. There's just a piece that's gone up uh, uh, half an hour ago, uh, looking at the five key areas of kind of competition. Some of the uh, look, looking at that competition that. Um, 
is in the squad and uh, Craig Fowler picked out five key areas. So do go out and check that. We'll be back on Friday, hopefully, with uh, Scott McIntosh to preview the Rangers game. Um, and just before I go, Liam L asks, will the likes of Pollock have to be named for Europe to meet the numbers of homegrown? Uh, no, because of his age, he will um, he'll be able to go on the list, no problem at yeah. all. So yes, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, have a good evening. Goodbye. Bye-bye.